Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. Even more specifically than that, we're here at the grave of Jim Thorpe. Yes, the town, Jim Thorpe, named after the man, Jim Thorpe. Now, Jim Thorpe, one of the uh, greatest athletes to ever have lived. It says he was the greatest athlete of the first half of the 20th century. He was a multi-sport athlete, just, just one of the absolute top athletes in the world, exceeding nearly everyone in every sport that he played. So that would make sense why the town would want to name themselves after Jim Thorpe, such a revered athlete, also known as a, as a good human being, a respectable person, a inspirational figure in the town. Wanted to honor him by naming themselves Jim Thorpe. But one thing you may find strange about this, uh, this, this decision is that Jim Thorpe, not from Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. In fact, he was not from anywhere near Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. He's actually from Oklahoma. And uh, even stranger, Jim Thorpe never even visited Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. Now, Jim Thorpe used to be known as Monchuck, Pennsylvania. And uh, they decided they needed something to bring tourism into the area. And to do this, they purchased the body of Jim Thorpe from his wife after, after his funeral. Um, it is said that she had tried to petition the state of Oklahoma to erect a monument to Jim Thorpe. She was angry that they did not and that she made a deal with the town of Monchuck, Pennsylvania instead. So they shipped Jim's remains out here to Pennsylvania. They made a monument here, a whole little park with several statues here in Pennsylvania and uh, changed the town name. Now it is said that uh, Jim Thorpe's children are actually not happy about this, that uh, they felt that uh, he should be buried with his family on the Native American reservation that they lived in Oklahoma. He was a Native American and uh, his children have long petitioned to, to get the body moved and there was a back and forth court battle that eventually went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court refused to hear it and therefore the matter is settled and Jim Thorpe stays here in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. And here's a statue of the man himself. Jim Thorpe actually played in the early NFL, but uh, actually he became prominent first because I actually participated in the uh, 1912 Olympic Games in which he uh, got a gold medal in all but one event that he competed at. I think he got uh, maybe three gold medals if I remember correctly. And here is the tomb of Jim Thorpe. And uh, you see the inscription here, it says, Sir? You're the greatest athlete in the world. King Gustav of Stockholm, Sweden. Now, I'll be honest, I had not heard of Jim Thorpe until I heard of the town Jim Thorpe and heard the story of how he was moved here. Did anyone else? I just, I'm just curious on how many people are still familiar with Jim Thorpe. He passed away in 1953. If you're familiar, if you were familiar with Jim Thorpe and his career prior to this video, leave a comment in the comment section. I'm just curious because I actually did some research. He's a very fascinating figure. You can see uh, etched on the tomb here the different uh, events that he participated in. I think that's the, is that the shot put there? He has jumping hurdles. These are the, uh, the uh, events he participated in in the Olympics. Of course, he also played baseball. He was in, uh, played Major League Baseball and Football. Not a lot of people do both of those. There is the, I guess, the uh, pole vaulting there in the Olympics. See the Native American inscription there. He was a uh, Native American and uh, was, of course, proud of his heritage and dealt with a lot of, uh, a lot of prejudice throughout his career. See him running there. And finally, his uh, him playing football. 
again in the early NFL. Now one uh, remarkable and, and kind of sad but remarkable story um, that, that I read about Jim Thorpe is that someone actually stole his running shoes before the Olympics. The Olympics where he had his extraordinary collection of gold medals and uh, he had no shoes to compete in. I think someone stole his shoes. They, they believe it may have been uh, motivated that people did not like him because he was a Native American. And uh, Jim Thorpe dug through a dumpster trying to find shoes. He found, didn't find a pair of shoes, he found two shoes, two mismatched shoes, and uh, put them on his feet and was able to win multiple gold medals wearing mismatched shoes he found in the dumpster. There's actually photos of him where he's wearing the, uh, the different shoes and um, has mis mismatched socks as well. I just, you can't even, I can't even, that, that just blows me away. I mean, the, the perseverance there is amazing, but just the idea that an athlete, of course, when you're running, when you're doing that sort of athletics, your shoes are your biggest tool. You're, you have to be have comfortable shoes, the shoes that you're used to, and he threw on some scrapped shoes from the dumpster that didn't even match and was able to win multiple gold medals. I probably couldn't even win one gold medal in my own shoes. Now they have the football statue over there. Over here we have, uh, I guess the Olympic statue throwing the, the discus there. And uh, yeah, they have the stats here. So, here are the events that he competed in. The broad jump, first place. The discus, first place. The meter dash, first place. The 1500 meter race, first place. The only thing he did not get first place in was the javelin, and he still got third place there. Yeah, these, yeah, pretty, pretty remarkable. You can see uh, first place, second place, third place, fourth place, first place, first place, second place. So just, yeah, and an and unbelievable, unbelievable athlete there. I guess this is supposed to be the baseball statue, but we have to wait on that one. It says it's uh, coming soon. There's one final monument here. It's a cloud with a lightning bolt coming out of it. it says that uh, his Native American name was Wathohuk, which means path lit up at night by a bolt of lightning. So there, a bolt of lightning being uh, his symbol there. So I'm curious what you guys think is, uh, do you think Jim Thorpe's body should be left here in Pennsylvania? Do you think, you know, they, 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 they purchased him, brought him here, not only out of reverence, but to help bring attention to the area itself, to bring tourism here into uh, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania? Um, or do you think, you know, he should be sent back to Oklahoma and, and put in his family, his family graveyard? Um, especially, you know, being Native American, being buried on Native American soil, soil was important to, uh, to his family. I don't know, it's an inter it's interesting question. I'm curious what you guys think. Leave a comment in the comment section. Definitely seems like they are putting a lot of effort into memorializing him here in Pennsylvania, but I can definitely other understand uh, the other side of the coin as well. So yes, Clark, Jim Thorpe was an amazing man, but it is time to hit that long, lonesome road. And we have landed in Langton, Pennsylvania. We are here at Country Junction, the world's largest general store. And I've never had a chance to stop here before, but actually uh, Jen, uh, in her travels, stopped by here and made a video on her channel, Jenny Penny, if you guys want to check out Jenny Penny on YouTube. And uh, she told me this was an amazing place, that it was right up my alley, so I figured I'd stop by here and check it out for myself. You can hear they're actually playing their uh, theme song here as we uh, enter the store. Right when we enter here, we're being serenaded by a scarecrow with a uh, with a banjo there, singing the Country Junction song. 
into the microphone. Welcome everyone, let's all have some fun. You're the reason we are number one. It says here this is a barrel full of laughs. Let's do press, I guess we press the red button here. We are following the uh, yellow brick road here. Oh yes, he confirms my suspicions. See the great and powerful Oz there floating away <laughs> on his hot air balloon says, follow the yellow brick road. So we walk through uh, this barn here. They're actually playing Wizard of Oz on a TV up there. So here we can either follow the yellow brick road or go into the bowling party room here. But I think before we do anything, we need to get a penny smashed by the scarecrow here. I love the uh, I love the Wizard of Oz theming. That's pretty uh, pretty amazing. Let's see if old scarecrow here will smash us a penny. What designs do we have to pick? Oh, they're all uh, Wizard of Oz themed. This is Country Junction, Pennsylvania, with the. Uh, Dorothy and the friends of Dorothy there. Tap your heels three times. Follow the old record. I think I like this one. I think we're gonna get this one made. Let's uh, insert, insert our dollar don't be there. Shy. So don't be, don't be shy. Oh, what a smart choice. I wish I had your brain. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't chosen yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and, go ahead and hit the button. There goes, crushing our penny. Well, thank you, Scarecrow. Let's take a look at our uh, penny there. Yeah, wonderful pat smash penny there with Dorothy and her friends. So hopefully I can, you know, not lose these. I'm really bad at losing all the, uh, all the smash pennies before I get home. Oh, wow. It's a singing tree. Oh, there his eyes go. Hopefully this was one of the angry trees from Wizard of Oz. We got Pappy, Pappy up there. Let's see uh, if we can activate Pappy, this button. Oh, he's singing the Country Junction song. Of course, we all know a cow you can sit on is a couch. And a horse you can sit on is a is a hair, like a horse chair, a hair. May need to work on that second one. Oh, we have some uh, corn salsa samples. Oh, I love these little spoons. So you'll get us a little bit of a little bit of corn salsa there. With our tiny, our tiny, tiny spoon. Ooh, that is quite delicious. Of course, Easter's coming up. Time to get your uh, plastic eggs now out of the back of this pickup truck being driven by the Easter Bunny. This cow head here, and there's a button. So I'm really, I'm really hoping the, the cow head will, will talk if we hit the button here. Let's, let's see. The cow stools only have three legs because the cow has the udder. Why do cow stools only have three legs? Because the cow has the udder. So he, sing, he, he talks in cow puns? Why did the cow jump over the moon? I don't know. Because the farmer had cold hands. The cow jumped over the moon because the farmer had cold hands. I guess touching the udders caused the cow to leap over the moon. 
This this cow's pun game is better than mine. How does a cow become invisible? How does a cow become invisible? Oh, a cow becomes invisible through camouflage. What is a cow's favorite game? Musical chairs. Cow's favorite game is musical chairs. I would have said Moonopoly. We call a cow jumping over barbed wires. Utter destruction. Cow jumping over barbed wire is utter destruction because the barbed wire would destroy the cow's nipples. But here we have a psychic chicken. Oh, there, there, there's the, the, the psychic chickens. We're gonna, we're gonna a little hat of some sort. Let's uh, see if we can get our uh, our future predicted by uh, by this psychic chicken here. Give the chicken a dollar. Oh, there it goes. I used to love these type of machines when I was a kid, the, the egg dispensing machines. Does it lay an egg? It's rotating slowly. Oh, all right, lay the egg there. Here's the egg chute. Let's see what we got, what we have in our egg. It's a, oh. It's a missile. Little egg laid a chicken laid a missile. I guess if the chicken lays a key, you can open up these lockers here and win one of these better prizes, like Superman there, or uh, I guess that's got a, a, a squeaking chicken and a, and a ping pong gun in it. Do we have more talking animals here? Let's make the let's make the horse talk. <laughs> I didn't get that one. What kind of bread did the horse eat? And I couldn't quite understand him. Did anyone hear what he said? Leave a comment in the comment section if you heard what he said. Let's be really quiet and see if we can hear him next time. How do you know if a horse has a sore throat? It's a little horse. <laughs> How do you know if his horse is a sore throat? Because it's a little horse. This horse also means like when you when you talk, when you're, when you're speaking is difficult because your throat hurts. It's called being horse, but he also Horse is the name of an animal. What street do horses live on? Main Street. Main Street. Main. Horses live on Main Street because their hair is called a mane. The vampires watch horse racing when it's neck to neck. Vampires, because vampires like to watch horse races when it's neck to neck because vampires like to suck blood out of necks. And when a horse races neck to neck, it means like the horses are really close together because they're probably because their necks are near. Let's see what jokes this steer has to tell. What do you say? Looks like there's another talking tree over here. Oh, there he goes. He wasn't moving at first. What wisdom do you have for us, talking tree? I am a tree. A very special we have tree. And look at this, another scarecrow. I think this is scarecrow number three we've come across. Hey there, Dave, you've come to a fork in the road. Which way are you going? That way is nice. Some people do go that way. Of course, some people do go either way. You're probably lost. Well, welcome to Country Junction. It was probably here yesterday. I think they moved it. They're always moving something. Sometimes they have it over here, sometimes they have it <laughs> over there. So which way? Well, it's a no way. You should go both ways. We should go you both ways. Find it over there. Well, at any rate, you better know what you'll find. Just keep following the yellow brick road. Okay. I'm sure. Just there. keep following the yellow brick road. Gotcha. Love this song. 
Will you give me a lead? Young chin, that's a bleed for me. And look at over here, we have this uh, glass area here where they have, they have puppies. Look at that. <laughs> they have three adorable puppies here. I was not expecting to see puppies here at Country Junction. Oh, look at them. Hey, little guy, come here. Oh, they're very curious. They're all digging through the, the wood chips there. Oh, oh, he just got hungry. Going over there to get something to eat. Why are there puppies here? Oh, look at that. Man, I would <laughs> I would love one of these puppies. I just can't take a can't take care of a dog while I'm uh, traveling all over the country. Okay, apparently this section over here is a whole pet store. Have a dog here. This is a Newfoundland. Uh -huh. They don't just have dogs. They have a, they have a giant iguana here. Says uh, his name was Pistol Whip. He says he was living in a horrible conditions in a wire cage, was not given proper heating, lighting, humidity, and food, which is why my toes and tail look the way I do. I'm a resident at Country Junction, and I'm not for sale. Oh, this poor Pistol here was uh, was neglected, but now he gets to live here at uh, Country Junction. That is a beautiful, beautiful iguana. Hey, Pistol Whip. They say don't knock on the glass. I can wave at him. Hey there, buddy. Some gerbils here. These gerbils these days were about $20 a piece. Some little gerbils down there, grooming each other. Up here in the rafters. Looks like there's a velociraptor made of hay up there. I also don't know where that tiger came from. I just got my uh, fish tank set up. Have the the small uh, fish tank, the 10 gallon tank, built into a video poker machine I have in my living room. Yeah, look at these beautiful, beautiful fish here. Oh, look at that guy. I think I had one of those, but I forget. I forget what they're called. Is that maybe a? I think that's called a snakehead. I think a snakehead right there. You gotta be careful because they will crawl out of the tank and walk across the floor. True story. Yeah, over here in the fish section, in the aquarium section, they have a pen of veloc <laughs> velociraptors. Yeah, there is just fun around every corner here. <laughs> I, oh, what, do they stop? Oh, be very quiet. They can only they can only see you if you're moving. They have the uh, motion detector there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of a, just a sprawling store. We're now in like a section that sells like baskets. We are just in a fish section that sold fish. But look who's here. We, no matter where we go, the Wizard of Oz theme follows us with the Wicked Witch of the West. See the tornado there. Oh no. Oh, there she goes. Thought she was broken for a second. Oh, there's another talking tree. This one's different than those other two talking trees. What's the difference between a worm and an animal? Well, I never want to try a worm pie. What did one maggot say to the other? Worm your way out of that one, man. You know what? Swims and trunks. They're in the flower section. It looks like there's a whole furniture store in here. Of course, no dogs allowed in the furniture store. Yeah, look how massive this is. Looks like an expansive furniture store in here. Interesting. Just turn the corner here and I've encountered this mountain 
of taxidermy over here. Got like a whole lion right there. See a mountain lion jumping on the back of those deer. Oh, look at that big fish back there. That's only $400 for that big fish. That's a pretty pretty good price as far as taxidermy goes. And uh, got a reindeer here. And uh, I don't know what this button does. Oh, the speaker sings bear necessities because there's a because there's a giant grizzly bear right there. What about this button here? Oh, there's a bear, bear head right there, singing singing the gummy bear song. Yeah, look at all these uh, taxidermied heads up here on the wall. The moose head right there. All these different antlered creatures and um down here i think is this the i think this is the rolling stones it's like an animatronic rolling stones i have no idea where these came from i don't know did these do these uh these work is that mick jagger there in the back walk around the other side these walking sticks you know, that keith richards keith richards the rest of the rolling stones and then the cowardly lion back there. This is the, uh, the, the Wizard of Oz figure spread out through the store. Let me see here. Yeah, I was looking for a hat the other day. I had trouble finding one at Walmart. They have quite a selection of, uh, of warm hats, as well as warm gloves. I still don't own I still don't own any gloves. I may invest in gloves at some point. Oh, and could it be? Could it be? It's Dorothy. Dorothy, watch out. Is that a flying monkey right there? No, no. That, that monkey doesn't have wings, so we're safe. Now, Dorothy here in the field of poppies. Let's uh, see what she has to say. That wasn't dreaming. I couldn't have been dreaming. This was a real place. <laughs> no place like country junctions, he says. Okay, I thought we were missing one of the friends of Dorothy here. Got the tin, the tin woodsman here. You hold an echo when you throw it on my chest. Because I haven't got a heart. I've got an empty cutting. What else does it want to let a big rest from my adventures? Oh, that's not all we have here. Look who's up on top of this house here. The witch, the witch has returned. Oh no. Oh wow. Yeah, a lot of Easter stuff on display now. This whole Easter section, tons of giant bunnies there appears to be some sort of a orangutan over here do you talk mr. orangutan was that was that it's the giant was that a giant fart I really a fart that's where we're going here we got Wizard of Oz and then a, and then a farting orangutan now, I do recognize these Wizard of Oz characters as being from Characters Unlimited, the company in uh, Boulder City, Nevada, that makes Zoltar. So uh, it's been nice to meet some of your family here, Zoltar. And uh, of course, as always, I will, uh, I will give you a dollar. 
Skip. Your fortune is mine for the telling and yours for the hearing. Come, let Zoltar tell you more. Here you got my dollar, Zoltar. Give me my fortune. Are you ready? For Zoltar the wise gypsy has prepared a little poem just for you. A poem? Life is mostly froth and bubble. Two things stand alone. Kindness in another's trouble. Courage in your own. Do not worry, little one. You are not in trouble. But have courage today in your adventures. And come back to visit Zoltar for more wisdom. I will. As always. There's some vultures up here above the uh, scented candle section. All these big buttons to activate the... Hey, hey, let's go on a scavenger hunt. A scavenger hey, hunt? Hey, that's funny. See, because we're... not the kid. Oh, you just don't get my humor. You said you let's go on a scavenger hunt. Because they're scavengers. The they, eat dead, they eat dead animals. I don't animals. like skunk. Well, how do you know you don't like flattened skunk if you've never tried flattened skunk? You know the lions leave it behind. We eat it. The leopards don't like it. We eat it. Well, if that's not an eating disorder, what is? What goes better with roadkill anyway? Red or white? You know, Murray, I wouldn't mind if someday you'd find a breath mint lying alongside the road. We saw Dorothy. We saw the friends of Dorothy. We saw the Wicked Witch. But we hadn't seen the Good Witch yet, Glinda. And it looks like someone has hung some socks on her magic wand. I'm gonna take that off and uh, and set that over here so that we can get the full experience of uh, of Glinda, the good witch here. There's no place like home. Everyone here at Country Junction thinks you're a hero. All right, click our heels together. I think the Elbrick Road's taking us back in a circle. We have a Quasimodo here hanging from the ceiling. Man, I'm almost, and he's actually for sale. I'm actually tempted to take him home and uh, hang him from my ceiling. Although I think my ceiling may be a little too, uh, a little too low. I have a full-size arcade here at uh, Country Junction, so uh, let's play a few games. Okay, I put $10 on my uh, rechargeable Country Junction fun card. Let's see how far this gets us. Of course, we gotta try the uh, Hen House Outhouse Hoedown here, where we uh, shoot chickens inside of an outhouse. Let's uh, swipe our card here. All right. Stu, we'll do the eight, you either choose to do one minute unlimited shots or just 18 shots. I always pick the set number of shots so I can take my time and line everything up. So let's see. Oh, there we go. I've already set off the disco. Is there like a, oh, there's like a fox in the toilet there. Man, chaos reigns here. Let's see. I don't know what that chicken did. Let's see here. Whoop. I think I hit all the targets. Yeah. Oh, I got two shots left. Oh, I didn't even know there's targets up here. Oh, 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 what's happening? All right, out of, out of shots. There's a uh, bandito of some sort right here. And uh, another shooting gallery. This one with a uh, animatronic bear. This is called Prospector's Peak. So uh, let's give this, uh, give this a swipe here on the card. I think we're down to, that's two points. I think points are a dollar. There we go, we're down to six dollars. So uh, let's, uh, again, let's go with the 18 shots. And the pistol here. Let's see if we can get this bear to talk. Oh, there he goes. There we go. It's not not the country bears, but but it's something. Let's 
safely. Oh yeah, you shoot that mine cart, it dumps over there. I'll get the woodpecker. Woodpecker there. The snake do something? Oh yeah. He hisses, hisses at us. Oh, there's an explosion. It's explosion there. Something uh, deflated there. But I noticed the uh, the pig you can sit in here. If the uh, a chair, if a, if, a, if a cow you can sit on is a couch, and a uh, horse you can sit on is a hare, then uh, is a pig either a pear or a pouch. I'm baffled. What, what, what would you call a unicorn couch? And uh, why is it called a unicorn anyways? It, you know, are, are we implying that the thing sticking out of its forehead is a is a cob of corn? Yeah, I was thinking about uh, thinking about trying my hand at a claw machine. Another bad habit to get back into. But uh, the claw machines are all these are these are all eight points. So I only have six dollars left. So I don't think we can. Uh, don't think we can play any claw machines today. Of course, I mean I could, I could plunk some more money down and, and, and play the claw machines. But I've learned uh, that they're not really a sound return on investment. But uh, we can play a game of whack-a-mole here. Let's play whack-a-mole. All right, let's play. Oh, I didn't even have my hammer ready yet. One time, one time I met the guy, met the guy who invented whack-a-mole. True story. What is a good strategy for whack-a-mole? I, so it's like, it's really stressful. Sometimes like more than one pop up. Look at that, like all, it's, they go down really fast. And sometimes they move too quick for you to hit them. The very, very stressful, stress-inducing game. Oh yeah, 100 tickets. I guess they don't spit out the tickets anymore. They just put the tickets directly onto your card. With my final two points, I found something, uh, Something that takes two points. This is Ducky Splash. Swipe there. All right, and okay. Sprays water here. So what are we what are, what are we doing here? Oh, so we're trying to spray the ducks. We're trying to spray the ducks into the hole. I think we get a point if the ducks make their way into the hole. Spraying with a dinosaur for some reason. Ducky Splash. There's something you can play two player. There's another dinosaur there. Oh, come on, where are my duckies? My duckies aren't coming out of the hole. Oh, you gotta watch them. You gotta watch them out of the hole there. Well, there we go. Someone else is playing. Oh, uh, my dinosaur is all out of water. So there's this case right here. See, it's actually full of Wizard of Oz memorabilia. It says, we hope you enjoy Jim Everett's Wizard of Oz private collection. I'm not sure who Jim Everett is, but he has a wonderful Wizard of Oz collection. The Scarecrow there. There's the Winky Guards and that snow globe. And there's a horse of a different color. And it looks like we exit here through a petting zoo. Now it is pretty cold out right now. I don't know how many animals are going to be out at uh, at the petting zoo. Oh, there's a cow. Hey, cow. Hey, cow. Hey, cow. Hey, cow. Oh, I see you peeking. Hey, cow. All right, good. Go, go, go about your business. Okay, I just wanted to say hi. Okay. Oh, and if uh, if you can't uh, get the actual cow to give you attention, there's a fiberglass cow here. Oh, look at 
It's the trash can here. Oh yeah, the trash cans are shaped like outhouses. You just put your trash there in the moon. What are these displays here? It says, oh, you vote for your favorite Christmas village house. So I guess these are just different Christmas displays. I guess they maybe just left them up so people could enjoy them year round. So this is Santa's workshop here. Oh, okay. You can see the elves and there's like a full size Santa at work there as well. This is the uh, yeah, gingerbread man baking smaller gingerbread men. There's a Barbie themed Christmas display. Is that like Barbie's tree there? I feel like this past year you can go anywhere without one of these uh, Barbie photo op boxes. But you know me, I can never pass up a photo op. I wanna push you around, well I will, well I will, I wanna take you for granted. Twas the night before Christmas. Oh, I see Santa's taking a nap here, taking a, taking a break from uh, delivering presents and just chilling out on someone's chair. A chicken coop here. And look at that rooster, look at that rooster strutting around like he's hot stuff. Get a little Muppet Babies ride there. A little Fozzy. I've heard the Muppet Babies is never gonna never gonna be on streaming. I've heard because they uh, use so many clips, movie clips, when the when the kids are imagining things that uh, the uh, licensing is a nightmare, and so it will never be never be uh, brought back. Which is kind of sad because I remember a lot of positive memories of that when I was a kid. Also back here, a giant seagull, and a very scurvy pirate of the uh, sandbox here and several hippos sticking their heads out of the sand. Yeah, I thought there was ostriches that stuck their heads into the sand, not hippos that stuck their heads out of the sand. A happy little elephant there as well. Oh, and who do we got over here? Got a little goat. Hey goat, how are you doing? Your friend here, the alpaca. Hey alpaca. What you doing? Oh, it looks like it's another alpaca peeking at us from the barn. Here's the duck pond. Hey, ducks. Just hanging out in your pond here? Oh, look at this duck. I love his haircut. Some pretty awesome hair there, duck. Oh, look at this donkey over here. Donkey is mildly mortifying now check this out we may have to come back here in the in the warmer weather because there is a little amusement park back here looks like it's not operating currently it's off season but we have a uh have some dizzy dragons there not sure exactly uh what ride this is right here. Looks like it's partially dismantled for the winter. And peeking through the fence here, what is that? It's an octopus holding a guitar, some other fish. Is that like a animatronic band of some sort? A little undersea band? Yeah, we have to come back and see these amusement rides when they are uh, put back together for the warmer season. There's like a uh, outdoor fun house there. It's called Super Raiders. Fun stuff. So thank you for joining here today at Country Junction. A lot of fun to be had here at the Junction. Definitely love the Wizard of Oz theming, love the animatronics, and just love how it all comes together. And yeah, it just keeps going. They got the arcade, they've got uh, They've got the petting zoo. During the summer, it looks like they have a, uh, a, a music park. And I think there is I think there's a haunt here somewhere. I think back uh, hidden in that area somewhere where they have it blocked off right now. I think during, uh, during the haunt season, they actually run a haunt. So maybe, I don't know, if they would let me, I would love to come out and check out the haunt here at, uh, at Country Junction. Uh, but thank you guys so much for joining me today. If uh, you like these videos, please subscribe. 
I'm trying to get to half a million subs. I don't get win anything, I don't get any award, I don't get a plaque, but it's just a personal goal I have. And I need, I think I need, uh, as of today, I need uh, 15,000 more subscribers, which is, that is a lot of people. I will probably never get that. But I'd like to try. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, it, it does help me out in the, in the algorithm and all those YouTube things that people worry about. Uh, subscriptions do help. Um, if you uh, would like to help support the channel in other ways, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and uh, doing personalized messages on Cameo. I got a few I gotta go do uh, tonight. I'm gonna go do them in the car right here after I uh, finish filming. But uh, of course those have been a lot of fun. And again, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat on the water, and this dirigible in the air. Till next time my friends, this one's in the bag.